the Chase Thomas podcast for people who have nothing but time to kill. Another strong defensive effort. Uh, Tennessee has not given up 20 points in a ball game uh, through eight games here. Haven't given up uh, 20 points um, nearing a year now because the last time they gave up 20 points or more um, was against Vanderbilt um, in 2023. So uh, it's been a little bit, Matt Green here. We're uh, three games away from Tennessee going a full year uh, without giving up 20 points um, or more in a football game. But they beat uh, Kentucky 28-18 to 18 here. Um, before I dive into my thoughts, what were your thoughts on Tennessee taking care of business to improve to 7-1 and one, uh, on the season? I love how you frame these games, sir. When Georgia played Auburn, it was what they escaped Auburn. And when they played Mississippi State, it was like barely hangs on. But this is taking care of business versus Kentucky. This was a this was kind of a rock fight for for four quarters, I would say. Like and another game. What's Tennessee? This deal with the devil they have. Another game where the where the starting quarterback goes out. I don't know what I don't know what they got going on in the water up there in Knoxville, but uh, you know, let, well, let's let's hope uh, who they got this? Who's who's Vanderbilt or who's Tennessee? You got Mississippi State this week? Yes, Van so Buren we'll, coming to town. So Van Buren can can make it through this one, but he's already uh, what was he second or third string coming into the season? He was second. Yeah, shaping so, one out. Yeah, he's 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 come on he's good. times, but. But no, I um, I thought this was, you know, I think we you still have to be worried about Tennessee's offense in terms of just another game where they score seven points in the fourth quarter in the first two quarters. Like at least they did ruin uh in that scoreless drought in the first half. But I personally thought that this was the best game I've seen Nico play in a Tennessee uniform. I thought he just like in terms of like his presence in the pocket getting out of some things and picking up first downs like and just the balls he was throwing he had at least two drop touchdowns it may have been three yeah. like there was some big he was actually putting it on the money on those on those deep throws that that we've seen him miss open guys all year long and now he hits a couple of those open guys and now the receivers drop the pass so it's um that's kind of kind of how it's felt at Carson Beck at times. It's like he's had his struggles of his own, and then the receivers are not helping him out, and then it just kind of compounds uh, to struggles on the offense. So I think you know twenty eight points against Kentucky. It's not like a bad offensive performance by any means, but you know this was a three point game in the fourth quarter with if we're going power ranking wise, what the fifteenth best team in the SEC, fourteenth Kentucky's uh, close to the bottom. So. You know, it's a it's a solid win. The defense looks good against a bad offense, but um, still another close win. And I think if you see these receivers start to catch some of these passes, you know, this is what people have wanted from Nico uh, or kind of anticipated Nico becoming. And I feel like you could see it more in this game, but the offense still has to click more for them to be, you know, the 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 title contender that they want to be. Um, I think that's fair. Um, I think Dylan, I mean, Dylan Sampson breaking the record here on Saturday night. He's up to 19 touchdowns this season, which is just crazy uh, with where Dylan Sampson's at. And he was huge in the second half. And this one, once again, two TDs in the second half for him. Um, but to your point, uh, Nico, 28 of 38. Um, and that there were several drops. One of the drops I won't put on the tight end Kitzelman where he got rocked and it was a great he like helmet on the ball in the end zone crosser. Like that's, that's fine. That's not a bad drop. Um, that was just a good, that was a better play by the Kentucky defender. Like that, that happens, but yeah, the Chris Brazel drop on the long bomb early in this game, that was six. Um, that can't happen. And then Chaz Nimrod, uh, the that crosser that Jalen Hyatt field. had, um, against honestly, uh, I think it was either against Bama or Kentucky in 2022, where that was a touchdown. And it just, like there was nobody behind him. Like if that if he catches that in stride, that's fifty yards, yak, T D. Um, and Nico's over four hundred because he finished with like two ninety eight um in this game. No turnovers. Um to you like I wrote about it today. I think this was Nico's best game as a Tennessee ball, which is what where you want to be right now. You're put you're getting into uh, November now and Nico playing his best football is the best case scenario for this team. Um, the receivers still have a lot of work to do. Like it's just all across the board. The receiver play has to improve. Um, Brew struggled in this one. Um, I thought Chris Brazel had a really tough day. He had two catches on uh, five targets. Squirrel White had two catches total. Um, 
Nimrod, obviously the big drop, but he also had a really big catch on the right-hand side. So he, you got to see kind of both there. Mike Matthews got in a little bit, but it was really the tight ends. Kitzelman had a huge day um, for Tennessee through the air, and so did Holden Stays at the other tight end spot. So that was good. I also love Peyton Lewis, a uh, true freshman blue chipper um, out of Salem, uh, Virginia, four-star. Um, he got a full series, um, the first touchdown series, um, to tie it up. Peyton Lewis came in there um, after the Dylan Sampson fumble, and he drove right down the field and got a bunch of opportunities, scored the touchdown. That was really that was really good to see if you're um, t- a Tennessee guy right now because I think Sampson, we've talked about it in this pod for the last couple weeks, I've written about it. Um, he's carrying a heavy, heavy workload. He had, I think, 27, 28 carries um, in this game. But you got to have some guys start popping. And Deshaun Bishop, we don't know what the latest on how dinged up he is because he left the game. Um, so we'll see where he's at, RB2. Um, but Peyton Lewis showing kind of like the Nate Frazier thing, where as Georgia, like, yeah, you feel good about Trevor Etienne and the upside there, but you want depth in the modern running back room. Like, you just want to have multiple guys you can count on. And I think similar to Nate Frazier, who popped for Georgia on Saturday, I think you you see some of the same traits with Peyton Lewis at Tennessee. I think Peyton Lewis, when he got picked up, I, he's the highest rated um, Tennessee back um, Heupel's brought in to this point. I think he's going to be a really good player and he just kind of has that complete look um, that that speed and size and power um, that I think Peyton Lewis is going to be a really good player. So that was really good to see to see him get in there. Um, but to your point, I think Nico is just huge and the quarterback situation for opposing quarterbacks. They're just getting drilled like this Tennessee defensive line, like James Pierce uh, just sandwiched uh, Brock Vandegrift on that one. And I just think that's part of playing this. I'll say Tennessee this one, front. they knocked him out of the game. There's been a lot of just, Guys getting benched for playing poorly, yeah. and and then there's been an injury or two. I, Taylor Green, I think, was just an I don't know if that was like a knocking him out of the game type thing. I, I obviously yeah. things happen. It's football, but right. No, I, and I'm just saying, like, it's just one of those where you're playing a front. Like, this is just a front seven that's going to get to the quarterback. And I think when you have a team that just gets to the quarterback over and over again, um, like, hey, you better have the backup ready because this team is just, they make life hard. That's why no one scored 20 or more points against this team all year long. It's a collective effort. Willow Brooks has another big pick in this game. Andre Turrentine has one. Um, but yeah, the front seven, James Pierce, Joshua Josephs and company, David Hobbs had a really good game in this one. Amari and Bryson running it. The one thing that surprised me though is early on, Kentucky had a 75 yard drive that ended in the red zone where they go for it on fourth down and don't get in. And the next drive, they drive 70-something yards again, um, which I hadn't seen from Tennessee all year. Um, Kentucky, two great opening drives to really put Tennessee on their heels. Well, that made me a little nervous uh, with how that game was going. And they ended up rushing for almost five yards to carry against Tennessee. And that's double what teams have been able to do against Tennessee's front all year. So it was actually a pretty solid day for Kentucky's offensive game plan um, against Tennessee. But I think... More than anything, this Tennessee defense just every week, like everyone's like, well, the offense got the offense still has some problems. But I think the two main things is, look, this defense defense travels in the sport and this wide tour. Tennessee's going to have a shot against Georgia in two weeks is that this defense is going to keep that game close, regardless of what the offense looks like um, a lot. It's going to be a top 10 matchup like it was two years ago. But the difference is Tennessee did not have this kind of defense when they went to Athens two years ago. Those bombs from Stetson down the field to Aaron Smith and stuff like that. Like it's just Tennessee hasn't given up that all year. And that they were giving those plays up um in 2022. And I just don't think they also, have the horses. This also offense is also averaging what half as many points a game as that offense did. Uh in, in Right, but I'm just saying this defense is going to make that a game. Like anyone who's expecting like a, a repeat of 2022. Um, I don't think that's going to be the case. I'm not saying I'm ready to predict Tennessee to win uh, that ball game in two weeks, but I do think the defense is going, based on especially what we've seen from Carson Beck over the last few weeks, um, Tennessee's defense is going to cause problems for that Georgia offense. And I don't know if the oh. Tennessee receivers are going to be able to do it, but Nico, the best thing coming out of this weekend is Nico played his best game as a ball. And when you are at this point, at this juncture, when you have the CFP in reach, you want your five-star redshirt freshman quarterback to be playing like this. And I think Nico, if he can put more and more games like that together uh, the rest of the way, Tennessee's going to be really hard to beat uh, down the stretch here. I, I'm with you there. And I think uh, this was the first game that I think, you know, some of that potential talk has been more like relevant that it's like, it felt like a lot of it was premature. It's like, okay, he, he's big and he, he looks, he looks good and everything, but he, he really, he hasn't been, you know, 
I would say uh, an uh, in the above at, he has him in the upper echelon of SEC quarterbacks like uh, this season by any means. But I think this was definitely an encouraging sign. But my job on this podcast is to play Debbie Downer for Tennessee. So, so your job? Still, it is my job, absolutely, okay. sir. I gotta I gotta bring the ball folk down a little bit. Like you said, uh, Kentucky had a lot of success running the ball. 174 yards on the ground. I believe that's the most Tennessee's given up in a game this year. Yeah. And if I am Tennessee and I'm looking at all the opponents we face this year, who is the best offense that Tennessee has gone up against? Because Arkansas probably. Arkansas, Alabama, I would I would say are probably Maybe Alabama, two. But I think Arkansas has been better by and large up until this Saturday. So, Arkansas as, was better. As good as the numbers are and everything, we've seen we've probably seen them play the worst offenses in the SEC it, when, when it comes to Oklahoma, when it comes to, you know, Kentucky now. Like we've just we've seen them play a lot of Florida. You know, they've they've done what they've done. They, they haven't been a very good team uh, offensively. So I don't know. I think. Um, that's the one thing I'll say. Tennessee does look good, I think, regardless of who they've played. But that's the if, if they do play, and that's the one thing this year. There's not a lot of those elite quarterbacks, so there's a chance you get all the way to the national championship and not face that Deshaun Watson, uh, that Trevor Lawrence that's going to expose your team or something. So uh, they could get all the way to the national title uh, still with the team they got right here. Yeah. Well, let's flip the script here, Matt Green, because I think I deserve an apology for – calling this one down the oh also all final thing too kentucky covering just felt like inevitable like kentucky played george obvious extremely well played old miss extremely well and beat them this team just gets up for these big games like kentucky's bat like that against the teams against teams lesser teams in the sec they've been getting their brains beat in but for whatever reason kentucky they just get up for uh for these big games against the top tier SEC teams. So that was, uh, yeah, they have a way of just kind of, you know, getting games into the mud and just kind yeah. of, you know, nicely done, nephew. The Chase Thomas podcast. Hell yeah.